this video, I'm going to introduce the idea of opportunity cost by graphing some budget lines. If you want to follow along with this lecture, you can always download this handout at www.berkeyacademy.com or I'll put a link to download it in the description of this video. Now, opportunity cost, when you look in your textbook, it says it is the value of the next highest valued alternative or the importance of the next best alternative. What does that mean? Well, what it means is when you make a choice to do something, like go to class, or consume something, buy something, there's always something that you're giving up, something you're not able to do, or something you're not able to buy if you buy the thing in question. So opportunity cost with a budget line, what we're trying to do is map out graphically the amount of two different things that you could have, that you might be considering, and to calculate and visualize how much of one thing you give up when you decide to get more of the other. Now, in the first example here, I'm going to just go through something kind of silly. Not a typical budget line as we might think about it. What we're going to imagine here is that you have $5 in the bank, and we're going to talk about various ways you might pull that money out of the bank. And the two ways you might want to take your money out are in quarters, or in dollar bills. So we have quarters here on the x-axis and we have dollar bills here on the y-axis. And what we want to do is just map out what are all the different possibilities for how I could pull my money out of the bank. Now this idea that we're talking about is very closely related to that of production possibilities curves. In this context I think about it as being a consumption possibilities curve. What are the different ways that I could spend my money on two different things? Here we're not spending, we're just pulling money out in two different ways. So if I have $5 in the bank and I pulled all of that money out in dollar bills, how many could I have? We're just looking at the two extremes and we're gonna connect them with a line. Well, if I pulled out no quarters and got all of my money out in dollar bills, of course I could get five dollar bills out. So let's put a little point there at zero quarters and $5. Now, let's look at the other extreme. What if I pulled out none of my money in dollar bills and pulled all of it out in quarters? If I had $5, how many quarters would that be? Well, there's four quarters in a dollar, so four times five is 20. So this is another possible point of how we could spend our money over here is 20 and zero. Now, a budget line is just simply connecting a line between those two points. So let me draw that line. So let's examine the, this line that we just drew here. The equation of this line, we need to know the y-intercept and the slope. The y-intercept is here at five. The equation would be y equals five. And then the slope is negative because this is a negatively sloped line and the slope is rise over run. And between these two end points, we could pick any two points, but between the two end points, we're going down five, so that's negative five. We're going over 20. So minus five over 20 simplifies to minus one fourth. So we could say minus one fourth X, or we could say Y equals five minus 0.25 X. Now what's the slope mean? And what does the Y intercept mean by the way? Well, the Y intercept means if we got zero quarters, we could get $5. But more important in this case is the slope because the slope tells us the opportunity cost. And let's visualize this. The slope is rise over run. And the slope tells us that each time we run over one, we go down a quarter, over one, down a quarter, over one, down a quarter, over one, down a quarter. Or, in other words, if we go over four, we go down one. That's what the one fourth means, minus one fourth. So that opportunity cost, what it's trying to tell us here is for each quarter that we get out, and this is in the United States, so there are four quarters in a dollar. That's why we call them quarters. So for each quarter we pull out, we lose the opportunity to get one quarter of a dollar. So one fourth of a dollar bill, right? In other words, for each four quarters, we lose the ability, we lose the opportunity to pull out one dollar for each four quarters. So that's one fourth of a dollar for each quarter, in other words. Now what would happen to this budget line if instead of $5, we only had 
Let's think about that. Is the slope going to change? Is the y-intercept going to change? Or both? Well, let's graph this budget line and see what happens. If we only have $3, then if we pulled out 0 quarters, we could have 3. $1 bills that we pull out, so that green dot right there. And if we pulled out $0 bills, we could have 3 times 4, 12 quarters. Now let's connect those two with a straight line. Here we see that the green line and the red line are parallel. The slope is the same. And we can calculate the slope using rise over run as we did before. We're going down 3 is the rise, over 12 is the run. So we could write this equation as y equals 3 minus 1 quarter, or 3 twelfths, x. So the slope doesn't change because the relationship between quarters and dollar bills has not changed. The opportunity cost is still, for each quarter we pull out, we lose the ability to have one quarter of a dollar bill. So the y-intercept has gone down. And this is typical of any budget line. Our opportunities for consuming or pulling money out of the bank are lower, right? A, a smaller set of possible values here for the green line than for the red line. We have fewer resources with which to operate here. Let's look at a more typical example of a budget line where we have two products. A budget line is an, another example of a model that economists use, and a model is just a simplification of reality where we're just focusing on two choices to make our graph easier to make and everything easier to think about. So the opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative, meaning since there's only two alternatives here, in this case we have x-rays and yellow pills, x-rays on the x-axis, yellow pills on the y-axis, we're constrained to thinking about two things. So we're either going to spend our budget here, and in this case I assume that we have $100 to spend on medicine and health care, and we're either going to spend it on yellow pills or x-rays. So let's draw our budget line, and then we'll talk about what this budget line tells us about opportunity cost. So our typical method of drawing a budget line is to ask what are the two extremes here? We ask ourselves two questions. First, if I spent no money on yellow pills, if I bought zero yellow pills, how many x-rays could I afford? Well, x-rays are $10 a piece, so $100 divided by $10 tells us that we could afford 10 x-rays. So let's put a point down here on the x-axis. 10 x-rays if we buy zero yellow pills. Now we need the other extreme. If we were to spend no money on x-rays, buy zero x-rays, spend all of our money on yellow pills, how many could we afford? $100 divided by the price, $5 each, gives us 20. So here's our other extreme point over here at zero x-rays, 20 yellow pills. And now we want to connect those with a straight line. So here's our budget line for this case. Let's talk just a little bit more about how we made this. The easy way, if you like equations, in order to find this point on the x-axis is to take your budget and divide it by the price of x. So $100 divided by $10 is how we got that 10 for the x-axis. Similarly, up here on the y-axis, we took our budget of $100 divided by $5 was 20. So that's how we got that number up there. Now we have our budget line. Let's talk about the equation of that budget line. So the equation of the budget line, y, the number of yellow pills we can get equals 20, the y-intercept, minus the slope. If we go between the two endpoints, we're going down 20, which is minus 20 over 10. So that's minus 20 over 10, a slope of minus 2. We could also look at any two points on this graph. We're going down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. So minus 2, x. Now what does the slope tell us? Again, it's an opportunity cost. What that slope tells us is each time we get an x-ray, we go from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3 for x-rays, each time we get another x-ray, we must give up two pills. One more x-ray, give up two pills. So the opportunity cost is, what are we giving up in terms of yellow pills when we get one more x-ray? Now we could also calculate the opportunity cost of getting one more yellow pill. That would be moving in the other direction. Let's think about that. Suppose we were down here at this end point getting 10 x-rays, and I decided I wanted one yellow pill. 
We're moving up one. If I move up one, how many x-rays do I have to give up to get one yellow pill? What's the opportunity cost of the pill? Well, we're, you see we're only giving up a half of an x-ray. So if I get one pill, I give up half of an x-ray. We'd only be able to afford nine and a half x-rays. Whatever half an x-ray is, I don't know. So if we move this way, one more x-ray, it tells us the opportunity cost of yellow pills, minus two. If we're moving the other way, the slope is one over, right? The opportunity cost is one over two or a half. So the slope here means that each x-ray we get causes us to give up two pills on the y-axis, that slope of minus two. Now, how would this line change if we had $120 to spend for our medical budget instead? Think about it. What would happen to the slope? What would happen to the y-intercept? Okay, now let's graph this. So using the same kind of formula we did up here, $120 divided by $5 would say that we could afford 24 yellow pills if we spent all our money on yellow pills. $120 divided by 10, we could afford 12 x-rays. So now we just want to connect those two dots. So here's our new budget line, the red. The slope is the same. Why is the slope the same? Well, because the opportunity cost is the same. X-rays are still twice as expensive as yellow pills. So that's why that opportunity cost is two, because an X-ray is $10 and a pill is only five. For each X-ray I get, it costs $10, which equates to two of the yellow pills. So the slope is the same. These lines are parallel, so the opportunity cost is exactly the same. Now, what would happen if the price of yellow pills increased to $10? Think about this, draw what the budget line would look like, and then we'll discuss. Here's what our new budget line would look like. What's the slope of that line? Well, between these two endpoints, we're going down 10 and over 10, and so the slope is minus 1. What does that minus one tell us? Well, that slope always tells us about the opportunity cost. Now that the price of the pills and the x-rays is the same, every time we get another x-ray, we lose the opportunity to buy one yellow pill. Get one x-ray, lose the opportunity to buy one yellow pill. Since they're the same price, the opportunity cost is now one for one. Whereas with the other two budget lines, the opportunity cost was two. In those cases, x-rays were twice as expensive, so you had to give up twice as much. So let me just mention a couple of additional things about budget lines. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that these are kind of similar to the idea of production possibilities curves, except they're a little simpler, but let me make those analogies now. On a production possibilities curve or production possibilities frontier, we usually talk about any points on the line are efficient. So any point on say the red line, if that was the situation we were in, would be efficient and attainable. Attainable means that it's something that we can do. In this case, something we can afford. If we have $120 and the prices were as they were, $10 and $5. So anything on the red line would be attainable. Any point outside the red line, like this one over here, where we're trying to afford 12 x-rays and 19 yellow pills, would be unattainable. So this point is unattainable because we don't have enough money, we don't have enough resources in order to afford that many. We're limited by the amounts on the red line. If we have $120 and the prices are $5 and $10. Now as the costs change, of course, what's attainable is going to change as well. One last parallel to a production possibilities curve. Let's look at a point like this, three and three. What would we say about a point where we could afford extra, three x-rays and three yellow pills? Is that attainable? Is it something we could afford? Well, of course. We have plenty of money in any of these three situations to afford only three x-rays and three yellow pills. But it's an indication that we're not using all of our resources. In this case, we're not spending all of our money. So this is the kind of point that we would call attainable because we can certainly afford that, but it's inefficient. If our goal is to maximize the amount of health care we're getting, we're just not using all of our resources for some reason. Maybe we lost some of, some of our money or maybe we wasted some of our money, but this would be a case 
that in a production possibilities curve context, we would call inefficient. We have different kinds of resources in those cases, labor, factories, materials, and in that kind of context, we wouldn't be using all of those resources or we wouldn't be using them effectively in any case. So the main goal of this kind of exercise, looking at budget lines, they're simple, they have a constant slope, and we're trying to get an understanding of what that slope tells us. And what that slope tells us is that if we want more of one thing, we have to give up some of the other. And the slope tells us how much of the item on the y-axis we have to give up for each additional unit of the thing we want more of on the x-axis. And this intuition becomes very important when we look at production possibilities curves because in those cases, the slopes are changing. So it's important to go ahead and get this initial understanding of how slope and opportunity cost are related. So I'm gonna end this video here. Please hit like and subscribe. Good luck, guys.